All right, um, <clears throat> let me go ahead and get started. I had a couple things that I wanted to talk about or that I was, that I was thinking about talking about. Uh, but as usual, uh, hopefully everybody can hear me, right? Um, can somebody kind of raise your hand or give me a little chat? Uh, if you can hear me. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, sorry about the uh, the move. I hope, uh, I, I don't know if, everybody, if anybody, everybody got the message there but uh, had something come up so th these will still usually be at two uh but but yeah today it was just something happened so um so yeah i mean um i, I wanted I, I was gonna try to go over uh the stuff you need to do to do the make submit um i know some people are still getting their dev boxes up although a lot of people um um i mean you know i had about half of the people it looks like have submitted things so far in the classes of the the, the practice assignment so I'll, I'll probably go ahead and still accept the the practice assignment uh submission today and still consider it uh, normally what i do is if you get both this practice and the assignment one done on time uh, i usually give a few bonus points on the first assignment like maybe 105 out of 100 or, or five extra bonus points um, uh, that's what I normally do, but but um, we can also talk about assignment one. This would kind of be really the last one. I want to try and, and, and discuss that at least for 10 or 15 minutes, although if you're working on assignment one and you're here, um, feel free to, yeah, you know, bring that up um, directly uh, while we're doing things here. So um, just a couple of things here. I'm going to bring up my own dev box. If, if um, Make certain that you're always using Vagrant Up and Vagrant Halt to bring your dev box up and down. I know sometimes some people, I didn't, maybe didn't mention it, or I should mention it a little bit more prominently in our instructions, but you know, Visual Studio um, has a GUI interface, and, and when you use Vagrant to create a virtual box, uh, you'll see your box, like in my case, is the COSC, Two three three six class box here, and you can actually start it up and shut it down here, but you don't want to do it from the Visual Studio, yeah, the 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 sorry from the Virtual Box uh, GUI, because Vagrant is managing some extra things, and if you start it up inside of a Virtual Box GUI, uh, you won't get all the features. Um, the most important one is uh, I should go ahead and bring this up, um, is that. Um, Vagrant manages, um, it shares your repository directory from the, from your host machine to your guest machine. So, so the dev box is the guest machine, which is a virtual machine. Your host machine is, is probably Windows or maybe Mac. I'm actually using Linux as my host machine as well. So I've got Linux both as my host and Linux, uh, or Ubuntu Linux is our class dev box is, is what runs in your guest machine here. So. Hopefully everybody can see my desktop here. I think I got it shared correctly. So, yeah. uh, but back to my point, while this is um, booting up, when you do your Vagrant up, uh, you know, you might want to pay attention to these messages, look if there's any errors or anything. So, um, um, I mean, I do often get this um, kind of message about you need an update, but you really don't need to update your box. Um, should be fine. Um, you might get some warnings about disconnects, but those are kind of normal too. Sometimes the, 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 the biggest errors to look out for are if, if your guest additions have some errors or, or have trouble being set up. So you definitely kind of do want to see, make certain that it checks for guest additions that you don't get any error messages after that. The other one, the, the one, the main one I'm talking about here is that the, your, your repository directory is mounted and shared from your host machine to your guest machine. And, and if the share isn't working, um, 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 it's a little bit inconvenient. I'm going to show that, talk about that a little bit here if you haven't discovered that yet. So, so here's my dev box. Um, for the practice assignment that I'm still kind of, kind of accept today, if, if people are working on it, all you really have to do is um, do the make submit and submit that uh, submission file, okay? So I was gonna quickly show you how to do that, okay? Um, so everybody, uh, back to this idea of, of mounting. So um, when you first log 
into your dev box, you should find under home, you have a repos. And under repos directory, there's already um, a, a repository. This should look the same as the repository that you clone when you did the steps to set your dev box. And it not only looks the same, it is actually the same directory. This is being shared uh, from your host machine into your dev box, okay? So if you do something like, um, if I create a new file here, um, I, I'm in my, my guest, my dev box. So if I copy, um, make a copy of my readme file and call it my new readme. So I just created a new file here on my dev box. If I go back and look at my a file browser, so this thing I'm bringing up right now is actually my file browser on my host machine. But if I go look in my, um, my home repos, COSC 2336DS algorithm, which is where I also clone my repository, notice you see it that there, because again, my, this, this directory is being shared from your host to your guest, back and forth, right? So, so any changes you make on your host, you can see on your guest, so I can, I can oops, um, so I could make another copy of that file and rename it. Uh, and now if I look back in here, I might have to refresh here, but if I look back on my, I'm back to my guest machine, so now you can see it there, right? Um, and, and so on. So the main advantage of that is that you can build, uh, you know, you can do your assignments and build your assignments in your dev box. Uh, but when, when it comes time to submit, once you do the make submit, you can just run, you know, your um, browser as usual on your host machine, whether it's Windows or Mac OS. You can go to, you know, assignments um, and click on the assignment and there, there'll be an option to upload a file for the assignment. Um, and, and then you can just navigate to your um, repository on your host machine and, and you should have the, 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 the file you need to submit for the assignments. You should be able to find it there, right? So, because it'll, it'll be in that shared directory, um, even though you build it on your dev box. So. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Or hopefully you guys are following me. So I, let's, let's go back then. So, so how do you make that, right? So for, for the, the practice assignment today, really all you need to do is, was do a make submit. Uh, another hint, um, I, I do have um, in, in the, the repository directory on your dev box, um, actually in your repository directory, there's a directory called docs. There's a couple of um, kind of like uh, cheat sheets or shortcut sheets. Uh, one of them, um, oh, I got the, I should put our spring, I should put the spring syllabus in there too. I got the fall syllabus. Uh, one of those though, there's a, a PDF um, with some uh, kind of a reference of some Linux command line commands that are useful that I'm going to kind of show real quickly, a few maybe, and also the, the commands you need to use the, the, the build system to, to, to build stuff for the assignments for this class. Okay. So we're using a tool called make to do our builds here. So let me show, uh, let me, let me show, let me run a terminal and show you doing some of these things here. So, so um, you can do some of the stuff inside of an, an edit, inside of a development environment like Visual Studio. Maybe if I have time, I'll show that uh, in a bit. Um, but, um, but you can do all the building and testing um, from the command line. So let, let's just show what you are, what you needed to do, what you do need to do for the um, example um, assignment oh, I, um, for the practice assignment for today. So in order to work with all any of these assignments for the class, you need to be in the assignment directory and, and, and you have to do some of this work from a, a command line tool. So you might have to learn some of the basic lines command line uh, commands so you can move around um, and, and, and do things from a command line terminal, right? So in particular, you have to change into the subdirectory for the assignment that you're working on. So for this example assignment, we first have to change into our repos directory. Um, so CD means change directory, and then you give the directory you want to change into. You can use the LS command to do a directory listing. 
I often use ls with the flags dash a dash l dash h. So this, this shows me all the files in the current directory. And this, instead of doing a, a short listing, it does a long listing. That's what the dash l is. And it does a human readable listing. So if I do that, I get each file on a line of its own. So in this directory, there's not many, very many files. Dot means the, the current directory. Dot dot means the parent directory. And then there's one more directory. So D at the front here means that there's a directory called COSC2336 that you, you should know, basically. So again, that's the same as if I'm using my file browser, going to home, repos. So that's our shared repository directory. And if we change into that, I, I use ls-a-l-h a lot, so I often make an alias, uh, just the single letter D to run the directory listing. So now I can do a D, which just is ls-a-l-h. So yeah, in here we've got um, all the, the file, all the folders and files that, that you might be familiar with a little bit um, at this point from setting up the dev box, including um, the folder with all the assignments in it called assignment. So now we need to change into assignment. And you won't have the solutions, but you've got all the subfolders for the assignments. And there's also a subfolder for this example um, assignment, this practice assignment here. All right, so that is just a few. That's really about all you need. Just you need to be able to do maybe directory listings. Uh, you can you, you can print out your current working directory, so you can kind of tell where you're at from the prompt. By default, it shows what directory you're currently at. But if you use PWD, it, it, will, it will give you your current. It'll print your working directory all the way from the root of the file system to where you're currently at. So I'm currently at my example zero one assignment uh, directory, which you know starts at the root, is in a subfolder called homes. Uh, my username is Vagrant, and your username will be Vagrant in these dev boxes. So our username is Vagrant, repos, COSC2336, assignment, and then this is a, the example 01 assignment, okay? Um, and yeah, we did CD. Um, there's a couple others in here. So these are the files in the example 01. So all you really need to do for the submission for today, you didn't really have to complete the, the example one um, assignment, um, this practice assignment, although I, I encourage you to do that if you have the time. Uh, I, I do show how you actually work on this example one assignment in the video. I think it's the video four is where I show doing the example one assignment. Um, but yeah, for here, when you're in assignment, you have to build it and test it. Um, and then ultimately, you want to use, do the make submit to make a submission file and upload that um, for the class, OK? Um, so I can do like a, a make cleans. If you want to clean everything up, make clean just deletes any um, executables that have been built and any object files and some other stuff. So now after I've done that, um, I've only got the, the, the basic files in my directory, the make file, so a couple of source files, uh, and a script. So you can run make by default uh, invokes the, actually, if you don't specify a target, so if, if you're doing, normally when you run make, you specify a target, like make clean. Uh, if you don't specify a target, it'll, it'll the, the, one of these targets will be run by default. So in our, um, build system, the, the, the make all target is specified by default. And, and the all target builds the, the, a couple of executables um, by default. So, so doing a make will, will actually uh, build all of the executable targets in the system. So this does take a little bit of time to build here, um, but we build, um, so a little bit, since it does take a little bit of time to do this, let me kind of explain what's happening here. So again, for this example assignment, uh, we had a couple of, of source files, CPP or C++ 
source files. There, there was a, a source file called example one main. And there's a source file called example one functions. There's also a .hpp file, um, which is a header file, a C++ header file, HPP. Um, and, and actually there's um, two, there's three CPP files, there's a function, there's one to build what's known as the, um, um, the, 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 the test executable, which is, has our unit tests that, that maybe I'll get a chance to talk a little bit about here. And there's one, uh, this main that, that builds the, um, uh, the debug executable, which um, I probably won't get a chance to talk about today, but uh, at a later time we'll get to talk about that. Okay. So what's happening here is that um, it, the, the, the make builds all of the um, source files one by one, compiles them from a source file into an object file. So we start by compiling the example one test file that CPP um, and the result is an object file. So object files are um, um, steps into um, uh, steps along the process into building an executable. So normally, in, in C++ and other compiled languages, uh, we build things into um, um, uh, files called object files, and then we link all those object files together to get uh, an executable, okay? So we, we build uh, the example one test into an object file, that we also build the example one functions into its corresponding object file. And then here, we're not actually compiling, we're linking, although we use G++ to both compile and link things together. So here we link together example one test object file, example one functions object file into an executable called test. Okay, so that's one of the, the resulting targets, um, a file that we can actually run here called test. And then we, we compile example one main into an object file again called example one main dot, dot O. And we, we link together main.o along with the functions.o that we built before. So we don't, we don't have to rebuild functions.o. We just link together main with functions to get a separate executable, the debug. All right. So that's, that's all, all of your assignments, these two executables are built for you when you do a make. Test executable and debug. Test runs the unit tests, and debug you can use to, to run a debugger with. Okay. Um, so you can, you can make those individually. So if you did a make test, it would actually build the test if it was out of date. Okay. So if I edited, um, so like if I touch my source file, touching it is, is as if I had made a small edit to it. So now the example one functions, um, is newer than, um, than, than, my build of the test. Um, it's also newer than the build of the debug. So, so now if you do a make, so, so one of the things that the make build system does for you is it only builds what's necessary um, to, to remake everything, okay? So here it, it is necessary to re recompile the functions and then um, re-link those together to get the test if I want to remake my test. So it should recompile my functions.cpp into a functions object file and then it, um, links those back together and get into a new test in order to get my updates for um, that I just did kind of from touching the file. Same thing would happen if you do a make debug, right? So, um, um, but yeah, it, it had already rebuilt the function, so it didn't have to rebuild it again. It just had to relink the main and the functions to get my new debug so when I did that. And again, if you do a make, with no target or make all, it basically makes the test debug, the, the, the test executable and the debug executable. Right? So now after you do a make, uh, and, and you do want to watch your make, you know, so the most important thing for assignments for this class is, is you do need to keep, make certain that they are building correctly. So, so if you're getting compilation errors instead of this build, completing, you need to first fix the, the compilation errors before you go off and start testing it, okay? And I'll come back to that maybe if, if, if we have some time here, but um, you, you can run these, these resulting executables by hand, so you can run the, 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 um, the unit test by calling the test executable. Um, here I did dot slash test to run the test executable. So it actually runs all of the unit tests here. 
um, or you can use the the make um, make run. We'll run the unit tests for this class. So if you do make run, it's actually running dot slash test um, uh, with a few extra flags here. Both of these, you know, whether you do it by hand or you use the make run, uh, basically is how you can run the unit tests. All right. Um, a quick note about running commands. I mean, running a command that you build yourself is the same as running a command that's available on Unix. So like word count, WC counts the number of lines, words, and characters in the file. So if I ask for the word count of example one functions.cpp, I get a report that it has um, 103 lines, um, 621 words, and 3,317 characters, basically. Right, but WC is just a command like the test and, and the debug that we just created. So, so like you did when you were setting up your dev box, you can use not where but which on Linux. So it's, it's where they, they do basically the same thing. So if I ask which way WC, it tells me that the WC command is found on my path in the user bin directory. Okay, so here I, I echoed my my environment variable that holds my path. These are all the places that are searched for commands if I try to run them from the command line or try to run them in other locations, right? So in this case, um, it can find the WC command because user bin is on my path right there, right? So I mentioned all that because notice that my current working directory, this example one directory is not on the path, okay? Um, but there is an executable called test, but it's in user bin, but it's not the same. There, there's an executable with the same name called test, uh, but it's in user bin. That, that's different from the executable that we just created called test here. Um, there's no executable called debug by default, usually on your, on your path. So if you do a which debug, notice nothing is, is output. So when it's silent like that, it means it couldn't find it, right? And if you try and run it, um, it'll say it can't find it, okay? So on Unix, on, on a bash shell, like, like on the, the C, on, on the, the Windows um, command line, um, you can run a command, even though it's not in your path, if you specify the full path to it. So if I wanted to run the, the debug, um, I couldn't specify the full path starting from the root, that's debug, right? Or, or um, and that actually ran my, the, the, this executable that we built here. Right? Um, or we could um, add this to our path if we wanted to. I won't show that. We, we could, but we normally don't want to do that. So we don't, normally don't want to add this example one or these assignment directories to our path. But this is kind of a lot to type if you want to run, our, if we want to run, if you run the test executable that it finds, that it actually finds, um, it doesn't seem to do anything, but it's not actually running our unit test, it's running this one. So if I want to run this one, again, I could get, I could specify the full path. So this is actually running um, our unit tests, right? The same thing as if you did a make run, okay? But notice um, when you do a make run, there's a dot slash. Another thing you can do, instead of, instead of specifying the full path, you can specify what's known as a relative path. Right? So what, what, what dot means, dot means the current directory. So dot, so from the current directory, um, look in the current directory and run, um, try and find a command and run it called test. Right? So, so that also runs my test instead of having to specify the, the full name from the path from the root um, like that, okay? So that's all we're doing there. Okay, hopefully you guys are following or hopefully that's useful. Um, to get back to, the, to, to, to wrap this up there, so once, once you've done that and once you've got all your tests passing, like, I, like all, all your tests are passing here for this example assignment, because I gave you, uh, when you watch the video, I actually show kind of um, where the te where the project, as if um, I hadn't actually uh, solved it yet, and, and we write the code, right? 
So I encourage you, to, if you have some time, to watch this example one, uh, the, the video four, um, where I go through working out this um, this uh, example one project here. So. Okay. Anyway, um, when when you're ready to submit, then so what you what you needed to do for today is you needed to to get to this example one subdirectory and do a make submit. So this creates the submission package for you for the assignments, right? And you can't do this by hand. So, so make submit, I mean, it just runs commands. And, and in theory, you could run these commands yourself. You know, so it, it runs this untrustify tool, which does, uh, which is a source code formatter and a source code style checker. Make certain that all the code that you write conforms to class style guidelines. Again, I hope we'll get a chance to talk a little bit more about that later on in the class. Um, and, and usually it doesn't do a whole lot. It basically then just um, uh, runs this tar command, which creates what, I'm, what I call the submission package, okay? So in this case, um, actually this one here. So in this case, all we're doing um, is we're gathering together all the files that you need to submit for your assignments, okay? And the result of this is a file called example01.tar.gz, okay? So now after I do a make submit, if you, if you look in your directory, there's a file called example1.tar.gz, all right? So that's what you have to upload for the assignments for the class. So for this practice assignment, you just need to upload this example one tar.gz. For, and for assignment one, you need to do all the same thing in the assignment one directory, but upload the assignment zero one dot tar dot gz um, file that you'll get. Okay. So again, when you do the make submit, um, you know, if you go to your file browser, browse to your assignment directory. You should find it, and again, that's the file you want to upload. But again, since this folder is being shared between your guest and your host, uh, the easiest thing for me, instead of running, I mean, you know, in theory, you could run, um, you know, your Firefox browser inside your your DevBox machine, log into MyLeo online. That that'll work fine. Or if you prefer, you can just go back to your browser on your host machine, like I have here. Go to you know assignment zero zero, uh, and then select to upload the file. Right. I see so far six people out of 19, so not quite half, but um, um, I know a few more people are, are going to try and get that. Um, and I had a few more people, I think, in the other section um, already. So we've got almost half the people um, seem to have had this uh, first um, practice. Um, I'll probably still accept it today, so hopefully if, if you're working on it now, or if you're watching this video, um, try and get this. So what I normally do with this practice assignment, if, if you submit this um, practice on time today, and you also submit assignment one on time, um, I'll probably give uh, five extra bonus points okay, um, to your assignment one. So. Um, all right, hopefully that was clear or, or helpful. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's the basic thing. So, so when you go into the assignment zero, there, there's a way to submit a file and you just have to navigate you know, to your repository on your host machine or, or wherever, um, find that submission, that tar.gz submission file and attach that and upload it. Okay, any questions? Um, yeah. When I, uh, so I, have, I haven't been able to get the virtual box set up. So, I mean, I've, tr I've been doing, I installed uh, the, the packages you told me for the home. Cause right. I'm, I'm, I'm compiling it on my home computer instead. Um, when I try to do a make test, I get an error called a cannot find else. yeah I'm not, I'm not gonna help people i'm not gonna help people set up like the make system and everything on like a windows system or something so you either have to get the dev box working or you have to find a linux machine and install the 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 c plus plus gnu compiler 
in, in the make system or something like that. So, so if you're, if you're saying that you're trying to get it so you can compile it on your windows machine or something, that's probably not going to be a route that'll work. So you have to do something to get the dev box working uh, in okay. some capacity. Well, my home uh, com OS is a uh, Linux. Okay, so if your home system is Linux, then you might be able to get it to work. Uh, maybe I can take it offline with you. So basically, all you have to do is get, um, um, so um, let me, uh, and maybe I already emailed some of these to you. So it depends on your Linux distribution and stuff. So you basically just have to get the G++ compiler, uh, uncrustify maybe, the, the, the basic one you need G++ to make. If you have those, you can probably do what you need to do. So. But, but uh, yeah, why don't you email me again and, and uh, we'll continue on if you want to try and get it working on like a Linux system that you've installed yourself. And we'll figure out which packages you need to have installed. So. Okay, sounds good. Okay, yeah. You basically just need, you need to have G++ compiler uh, and make. And then uh, if you have those, you could probably do it. Although, you know, there's some other things that would be good to also get. So. Um, so yeah, I've got. I, I kind of wanted to um, get people started on assignment one as well because you really what you're supposed to be doing is working on assignment one. So all, all the descriptions for the assignments are, are in the assignment folders as, as well as the starting code that you need to get started. Um, and I can also show a few quick points of using like Visual Studio Code. So there's some special hooks in the dev box that I created people for uh, so that you can run the, the make build system inside of Visual Studio. You can't really do the submit, the make submit, but you can do the clean and the build um, and, and run your unit test inside of Visual Studio Code. You can probably set up the same things in other development environments. I just didn't uh, have time to try and do that. So, um, so if I was gonna work on assignment one, I would go to the assignment one directory like I just did. So now I'm in assignment one. And I see that I've got some object files. So I'd, I'd built this actually last semester. It was probably the last time I used it. So probably, usually, I mean, you guys probably don't have to actually do the make clean unless something is really messed up. So if you're having some weird compiler error messages or something, it's often a good idea to do a make clean just to clean out everything so that you know if you recompile everything, um, uh, you're recompiling from, from scratch, basically. Uh, but, but often you only have to do that very once at the very start when you start working on a project. Um, and then for your assignment, and then, you know, do a make, oh, and so let me start Visual Studio. So you can do the clean and do the build from inside of like Visual Studio. So I had another project open here. So let me show you the basics of using Visual Studio code real quickly. So um, when you first open up Visual Studio, it, sh it shouldn't have any file or folder open. So let me, I had one open from the last time I used it. Let me close that. Um, so, so when you use Visual Studio Code and you go up here, this is the file explorer, the explorer actually. Um, um, you shouldn't have any folder open. You can, you can click that to open a folder, you know, or go to file, open folder. You should open folder or not open, um, open project or anything. So we've got just a basic, so, so don't open up a workspace. Uh, but you do need to open up a folder if you want to use the build system hooks and tools that we have in here. So open folder. And the other thing is don't, you need to open this up from the top level. So um, if you go to, you know, repos, you want to open that, the, the COSC 2336 directory. So don't navigate down to the sub assignment or the, again, the build hooks won't work if you open up like, assignment one or ex01 from Visual Studio Code. So, so you need to, to just go to repos um, and open up at the top level. What that does for you when you look at your folder that you have open, so again, this is like a file browser, a file navigator. So, so you can navigate, so you, you can navigate to any of, um, any, any of your assignments that you want to here. I, so, um, 
So for example, if, if you wanted to build work on example one, you would, you would navigate to that, open up the file and, and, and build uh, and test from there, okay? But here we're gonna start working on assignment one. So if I wanted to work on assignment one, just, just navigate down to assignment one. Um, and um, let's open up the um, functions and our, um, and uh, what are my tests? <laughs> I maybe I actually deleted those from from so, so main is used to, to to create the debug executable, but there should be a, a file called assignment one test to, to um, um, for the uh, the test files here. I'm gonna probably do a pull here. Pull that back down. Yep. Yeah, do that. Um, pardon me for a second. I'm gonna do this on my host machine. Uh, One moment here. Um, I got to restore that. There we go. Got my test back. Okay, sorry about that digression. You, have to worry. you shouldn't have to worry about that. You should have that. So um, let's open up the, the functions. I don't want the main open. Um, uh, yeah, I still don't see my test file here. Yeah, it's, it's in there. I guess it's just not, uh, hasn't refreshed from here yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop Visual Studio Code and restart. It should, it should have, since I, um, since I got it back out of my repository, it should show up here. Usually Visual Studio Code is pretty good about dynamically updating stuff. Let me just restart it though. Yeah, that's better. Okay, there it is. That's what I was looking for. There's the test for assignment one. And here's our functions. Uh, Visual Studio is a pain editor, uh, like uh, Sublime is like that, and Adam's like that. So if I want to, I can pull that over there. So I've got a side by side for my, my test over on the left, functions on the right. I close out that, that that was actually a terminal down there, and I close that off for now. So, so when you first start these assignments, uh, a lot of this, all this stuff will be um, commented out. So, for assignment one, um, if I can bring up the assignment description, close that off. Um, I mean, you should probably read the description, but um, usually I give you a, rel a relatively uh, detailed. Um, set of tasks that you need to do. So you need to start off by implementing the, the function named uh, calculate mean. Okay, so your basic workflow, I, I kind of described it here, I think in this first assignment. Um, so you want to start by uncommenting the first test case. So normally what happens uh, in the assignments that I give you, uh, I have test case, but they're commented out because uh, I want you to write the, the function, okay, so, and, and if I don't comment it out, your, your code wouldn't be compiling as I initially give it to you, okay, so, so I haven't done anything yet, um, I think, so, so one thing that I skipped over is that all the assignments I give you should compile um, the, as I give them to you, okay, so for example, uh, inside of Visual Studio Code, I can, I can do a, um, um, a task, um, I can't remember, tasks, Control Shift P brings up the command palette. Let me search for tasks. Tasks, run tasks. Control Shift C to run tasks. Um, uh, 
so um, yeah, I get. I, I thought I had keyboard shortcuts on here. Let me check it out. So, it, so you could do like that and, and do the make all here. That that'll do a make all. I, I I should have that if everything's set up correctly, bound to the keyboard keyboard binding. Control shift um, Control shift C to clean. Let me see if Control shift C is is working. Let me make clean. Yeah, I still have my computer. So Control shift C will do a make clean. And then control shift B, or if you go to the task and, and run the make all task, we'll, we'll run a make all. So now <coughs> these are just running the same commands. You can run these from a, a terminal, or you can run these from a terminal inside of Visual Studio Code. So instead of using my keyboard shortcuts, I could just open up a terminal, change directory to assignment, and run them like that, right? Um, Or I can use, you know, the 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 task hook um, and, and the keyboard shortcut. So, Control Shift C for clean. Control Shift B should do a make all. There we go, make all. Let me try that again. I think I. When I click that, I think it stopped my task there. Control Shift B, build. So again, this is doing the same build task that I that I talked about already. So you know, it's it's compiling the uh, the assignment one test CPP to an object file, which because of this unit test framework that um, I'll talk about a little bit here, uh, it takes a little bit of time to compile. So this this file always takes you know. 20, 30 seconds or so. It's a little bit annoying, but, um, but there you have it. Um, and then it'll, it'll compile like the functions into an object file and link them together and do all that kind of stuff again. So. so besides the CPP file, I also want to have my assignment on functions HPP file open up as well. I need to have both of those here for the next thing I'm going to do. So let me put both of those over there together. So I've got my functions header and my functions uh, CPP, which is the source code file over here on, on the right. And over on the left, we've got our assignment one test.cpp, which has our unit tests. Uh, and we're still compiling here, so it's still taking some time. So. Yeah, so we're finally compiled, we linked, we're finally done compiling. And, and then you can run the test within Visual Studio Code. Again, you know, you could, um, you could open up a new terminal, just do it by hand, um, or you can do Control-Shift-T, should run the unit tests. So you'll get them uh, um, here. Uh, so yeah, no, notice since everything's counted out, no tests are currently running, okay? So the first, uh, up here, I suggest that you start by uncommenting um, the, just the first test case um, and then try and compile it. So what will happen is, um, so the first test case is this one up at the top here. Oops. So to uncomment it, you have to kind of remove this here. Uh, and there's also a closing, so this is a um, you know an open and close kind of comment block in C. So you have to go to the bottom, and get rid of that as well. So just be careful of that. Now I'll save the file. So so I saved it. Now if you recompile, so notice um, so in Visual Studio we've got the IntelliSense. So um, it should be that, well, although something's not quite right here. So, so if we try and recompile this now, um, we'll find that it won't compile because we haven't actually uh, defined this function, calculate mean here. So uh, let's try that. So, so if we compile, um, since I made a change and saved assignment one test, it has to recompile that, but we get an error. Um, it doesn't know the calculate mean here. So, um, so 
So yeah, that, well, there it finally came. Um, so you should be able to, if everything's set up correctly, you should be able to like click on these, but, but yeah, I'm gonna have to check my settings are a little bit off again somehow. So, so you may not have everything completely cleanly set up on Visual Studio. So, but anyway, so it's, it's telling me here from the output um, that um, calculate mean was not declared, okay? So the, the second thing that I say is that you really should then um, implement so you can, you can um, so basically calculate mean function is supposed to take two parameters. You can kind of see from the signature here where we call it. So it takes um, an integer and it takes an array, an, an integer array, so it's two parameters, and it actually returns um, a floating point value. So the, what the function is supposed to do is you're supposed to, 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 to calculate the mean or calculate the average of the values in the array that you pass in as the second parameter for this assignment, okay? But, but anyway, you can start by, the function signature is that it returns a, a, a double actually, a floating point value, all right? So here, I mean, this is, this is kind of directly, um, translating that. So the signature, again, from looking at this, is that the function name is calculate mean. Uh, it takes a, just a regular integer as the first parameter. So we have to say there's a regular integer. I'm going to call that integer parameter size, right? And then it actually takes an array. This is an array of integers as the second parameter. So x uh, in our tests here is an integer array of different sizes here, right? And that's why we pass in. So the first test, we pass in an array of size one. So, so we're passing in the, the, this is described in the assignment description. So we pass in one because there's just one value in the array. And we pass in two because the second test, we have two values in the array and so on, right? So if, if you get the signature right, um, that will actually allow the, uh, that will actually allow the test because basically, we're including the assignment one functions header here. And I, I only put, this is what's known as a function signature in C++. So I don't have the implementation. We're gonna put the implementation for our functions in the .cpp file. The only thing that should go in the header file um, is the signature, right? So anybody that wants to use my calculate mean function only needs to include this header and the header, um, is enough information for the compiler to know that, okay, if, if, if you're trying to call that function, uh, it takes two parameters as input and returns a double as output, right? So that should allow, now, now that I saved that, um, if we do the build again, control shift B, it, it, again, it's still trying to recompile the tests, but this time it will succeed compiling the test because we provided the information about the calculate mean function, at least how you call the calculate mean function, okay? But since we haven't implemented calculate mean, we haven't actually provided an implementation yet, when it tries to link together, it's gonna to find that there's no implementation of the calculate mean function. So, so while, the, while it will compile successfully, um, it will fail when it tries to link this together with the um, assignment one functions that, that object file that, that we will compile next here. Um, So oh, that, that was, so yeah, if, if your IntelliSense is working correctly, you should get a problems thing down here. Um, and I've got no problems now because it actually compiled, although it, it didn't, um, 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 if, if you go back to your terminal, you can see um, this is the result of the compile. So like I was telling you, um, it compiles the tests, the functions, uh, but here when it tried to link them together, um, This was, this was the trying to link them together here. 
um, assignment one test .o, assignment one functions .o, um, and we got basically a, a link uh, error here. And that's because we haven't implemented the calculate mean function yet. Okay? We, we, we declared the function prototype, but, but there's no actual body for the function. Okay? So the bodies of functions in C programs go in the .c file, um, and, and your prototypes go in the .h file, the header file for, for C++ files, you do the same thing, but you put the prototypes in a .hpp file, and we put the, the, the implementation of the function um, in the .cpp file, okay? So there, there's some comments in here. So we really need to write the implementation here. So the, the, the implementation should start off with exactly the same prototype. So I want to copy that uh, and paste it here. Oops. Um, Try it again. So copy that, paste it. But instead of the semicolon at the end, we're going to actually use the open, open and closing curly brace, meaning that uh, this is the body. So, so we're, we're declaring our function, um, and now we're going to give the implementation of it, the actual body of the function, right? So here, uh, just to get so that everything can compile and link together. As I suggest in the um, in the assignment descriptions, just start. You always make certain that your your project is compiling. You know, so never write a lot of code uh, if it's not in a compilable state. So so let's just return a, a stub, a dummy thing. So we'll return the 0, 0.0, a, a double floating point value. So at least it should be able to compile and link everything together, and then we can start running the unit tests um, and fixing those and getting those to work, all right? So I saved it, uh, and then Control-Shift-B, so we can rebuild. So now um, it rebuilt the functions because I had added code to the functions, and then when it linked them together, it successfully linked, right? And we're good, right? And we had no problems from the compile um, and looking at the output. We saw no errors from the linking or, or errors in the output of the compilation, right? So we're good, so, so now we've got a compilable project, but now let's try and run it. So as, as you expect, so it's expecting that if I call it with an array of, with a value three, it should return that the mean is three because the, the mean of a single value is just the, the value, although it returns it as a double, right? But we're returning zero. So if we run our tests, control shift T to run the unit tests, and you'll have to kind of scroll back up to the top here, um, but you'll see that, the, so you'll always want to scroll up to the top of the unit test when you run them um, and find the first one that's failing. So the first one that's failing is the one on line 37, which was our first test here, because we, we were expecting it to be approximately three, but the, the function call on the left here actually returned zero, 0, 0.0, right? So, you know, we could actually get that test to, to pass. I could, I could save, uh, have it return three instead of zero. So change that to three, save, control shift B to build. Again, I, I encourage you to just make one small change or a, a very small change and then always rebuild and then rerun your tests. Control shift B to build, control shift T to test, and then go find your first failing test. Okay. So yeah, you know we're good. We 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 we're not. Our first failing test now is test forty three. You know, so, so we're we're passing that one, but we're saying that the average of three five is is three again instead of four, right? All right, and I've kind of run out of time, um, but um, but yeah, that's the basic kind of workflow for these assignments. And, and I actually gave you the start of the first assignment here, so you actually have to really count the real, calculate the real mean. And they actually have to write a second function where you calculate the standard deviation. I, I, and I give the description for the standard deviation um, as well in the assignment description. So. All right, so that was a bit quick. Um, and, and a lot of this is also covered in the, the, the videos for this week, so you can watch those as well. But uh, any, any questions here from the people that are still here? All right. Um, yeah, so with that, 
um, I am going to go ahead and stop the session. I will upload this as usual. Sorry that the time will, will, will usually be at three if you stay with me all the way to the end here. Uh, sorry, from two to three. Um, and we do these normally. All right. Um, I will see you guys all later then.